Hello and welcome back to our channel. A new episode for AZ-104 Microsoft Azure Administrator Certification Exam. Today we are diving into some carefully crafted exam questions complete with explanation to help you understand the core concepts. If you have not watched our previous video, you can check our entire playlist which has approx 100 plus questions. If you are looking for comprehensive AZ-104 preparation resources, we have got you covered. Visit our website Tech Cloud Solution where you will find the AZ-104 PDF featuring over 400 practice questions to sharpen your skills. An exclusive AZ-104 course that mimics the actual certification exam experience including detailed explanation for every question mock test and additional study materials to boost your confidence don't miss out after watching this video visit our websites and grab the ez104 pdf dumps or enroll in the course to get started this is your chance to supercharge your preparation and achieve your certification goals the link is in the description below question number 11 a company has the following set of servers that need to be migrated to an Azure subscription. So name, operating system and configuration are given as TechSet Pro ER1 as in Windows Server 2012 R2 Domain Controller, TechSet Pro ER2 Windows Server 2016 as Microsoft SQL Server 2016 and TechSet Pro ER3 that is Red Hat Linux Enterprise 7.5 file server. The company decides to use the data migration assistant tool to move the servers to Azure. Would this fulfill the requirement? And the options are yes and no. So the correct answer is no. So basically this tool is used for migrating SQL service data onto Azure. Also as per the Microsoft documentation, it has mentioned that data migration assistant helps you upgrade to a modern data platform by detecting compatibilities issues that can impact database functionality in your new version of SQL Server or Azure SQL database. DMA recommends performance and reliability improvements for your target environment and allows you to move your schema, data and uncontained objects from your source server to your target server. Question number 12. A company currently has an Azure web app in place located in the central US region. After deployment of the application to users across the world, some of the users are complaining of slow response times. Which of the following can be done to improve the response times for the web applications to users across the world? The options are A. Scale up the app service plan. B configure an Azure content delivery network endpoint, C, scale out the app service plan, and D, place the web application onto Azure blob storage. So the correct answer is B. So you can better response times for users across the world by using the Azure content delivery service. Also, this is clearly given in the Microsoft documentation as a content delivery network is a distributed network of servers that can efficiently deliver web content to users. CDNs store cached content on edge servers in point of presence location that are close to end users to minimize latency. Now you can look the benefits of using Azure CDN to deliver websites assets include better performance and improved users experience for end users specifically when using application in which multiple round trips are required to load a content. Then large scaling to better handle instantaneous high loads such as the start of a product launch event. Then distribution of users request and serving of content directly from edge server so that less traffic is sent to the origin server. Now option A and C are incorrect since scaling here is not the issue and option D is incorrect as Azure Web Apps is the right service for the web application. Question number 13. A team has enabled multi-factor authentication for three users as shown below. So username and multi-factor authentication are as given. So TechCert Lab user 1 is disabled. TechCert Lab user 2 is enforced and 
detect that lab user 3 is enabled. A group has been created and all users have been added as part of the group. You create a conditional access policy which enforces the use of multi-factor authentication for the group for all cloud-based application. Would TechCert Lab user 3 be required to use multi-factor authentication when signing into Azure via the web browser? And the options are yes and no. So the correct answer is yes. So different scenarios based on the user state is also given in the Microsoft documentation. And if the user state is in the enabled state, then the user will need to use MFA for the login process after the registration is complete. Question number 14. You want to create a custom metric to track a specific aspect of your application's behavior. How can you create and publish custom metrics in Azure monitor to track these application specific data point? The options are A. Enable diagnostic settings for your application resources and send custom metrics data to a log analytics workspace. B. Use Azure application insights to automatically collect custom metrics along with application performance data. C. Utilize Azure metric advisors to automatically detect anomalies in your custom metric data and alert you to potential issues. And D. Create a custom metric definition in Azure monitor and use the Azure monitor REST API to publish metric values. So the correct answer is D. So custom metrics are created using a metric definition in Azure monitor. You can use the Azure monitor REST API to programmatically send the values of your custom metrics data points to Azure monitor for storage and analysis. Question number 15. You are deploying an internal application on Azure VMs and you need to provide name resolution for these VMs within your virtual network. Which Azure services is designed specifically for internal name resolution in Azure VNets? The options are A. Azure Firewall B. Azure Traffic Manager C. Azure DNS and D. Azure Private DNS Zone So the correct answer is D. So Azure Private DNS Zones are specifically designed to provide internal name resolution within a virtual network. They allow you to define custom domain names that can be resolved to internal IP addresses facilitating communication between VMs and other resources within the VNet. Question number 16. You are using Azure Monitor to collect metrics and logs from the various Azure services. Which data storage options are available for storing the collected data in Azure Monitor? And what are the considerations for choosing the appropriate storage option? And the options are A. Azure Data Lake Storage B log analytics workspace c azure sql database d azure cosmos db and e azure storage account so the correct answer is a b and e so log analytics is the primary storage for azure monitor data particularly for logs for long-term archival and cost optimization you can use azure storage or azure data lake storage Question number 17, you need to implement a mechanism to track and analyze users patterns for Azure resources such as virtual machines utilization or storage consumption. How can you leverage Azure monitor logs and Azure log analytics to collect and analyze resource users data? The options are A. Enable Azure monitor logs to send platform metrics to Azure event hubs for storage and processing. B. Ignore Azure Monitor and manually export logs from each resource for analysis. C. Configure Azure Log Analytics to collect logs directly from virtual machines event logs only. D. Set up diagnostic settings on Azure resources to send platform logs and metrics to a log analytics workspace for centralized analysis. The correct answer is D. So Azure Monitor Logs in conjunction with Log Analytics Workspace provides a centralized and powerful platform for collecting, storing, and analyzing various types of resource users' data. 
that is platform logs metrics custom logs from azure resources question number 18 you are tasked with providing temporary access to a contractor for a specific project how would you ensure the contractor's access is automatically revoked after the project's end date the options are set an expiration date for the contractor's account during creation b assign the contractor a permanent license but revoke it manually after the project c manually disable the contractor's account after the project ends and d create a script to disable the account on the project's end date so the correct answer is a so setting an expiration date during users creation automates the revocation process and ensure that the contractor's access is terminated when the project ends Question number 19, you need to configure a jump box VM to provide secure access to other VMs in a virtual network. Which security best practices would you implement to harden the jump box VM and minimize the risk of unauthorized access? Select all that apply. The options are A, enable automatic updates without review. B, enable just in time VM access. C, install a web service on the jump box vm d use a multi-factor authentication and e use network security groups to restrict traffic so the correct answer is b d and e so the best practices should be implemented to harden the jump box vm and minimize unauthorized access is first use multi-factor authentication so it adds an extra layer of security by requiring a second form of authentication that is a code from your phone in addition to your password then enable just in time vm access so zit vm access helps reduce the attack surface by only opening the necessary ports to the jump box vm when needed then network security groups so nsg act as firewall for your virtual network allowing you to control inbound and outbound traffic now the following options should not be implemented as enable automatic updates without review so while automatic updates are important they should always be reviewed before installation on production system like the jump box vm to avoid potential issues or vulnerabilities the next option install a web server on the jump box vm so installing unnecessary software on the, the jump box vm increases its attack surface and introduces potential vulnerabilities therefore the correct options are b d and e question number 20 your organization is migrating to azure and you need to track resource users and cost across multiple departments how can you implement tagging to effectively categorize resources and allocate costs to specific departments the options are a use azure cost management to directly assign cost to department without using tags b use azure policy to enforce a single global tag for all resources c create a tagging strategy that defines a standard tag keys and values for different departments and apply these tags during resource deployment using azure resource manager templates or other automation tools and D, manually assign tags to each resource in the Azure portal after deployment. So the correct answer is C. So a well-defined tagging strategy and automated tag applications are crucial for accurate cost allocation and resource management across departments in Azure. I hope these tips and tricks help you feel more confident for your exam. And don't forget, you can download the PDF and take a real exam simulation on our websites. Check the link in the comment section. If you found this helpful, like, share and subscribe for more in-depth exam prep and let me know in the comment how your preparation is going. See you in the next one.